Okay, we're going to study this dynamic optimization problem. It was originally proposed by Ali and Chan in 1973 as part of a, a paper on dynamic optimization. So in this problem, we can minimize uh, this objective function. We have x1, x2, and x3. Those are all uh, state variables with initial conditions here, 0, 1, and 0 we're going to be able to adjust the value of u. Okay, so that's going to be our manipulated variable or degree of freedom for this, uh, for this problem. One of the unique things about this problem is there is an exact solution. So we can compare uh, to an exact solution and, and be able to see how well our numerical approach is approximating uh, the exact solution. Okay, so we're going to minimize just the final state of x3 at uh, time of pi over 2. Our first differential equation is just uh, a derivative of x1 with respect to time is going to be equal to x2. Here is x2 with respect to time equals u. And then our next one, this was what, it ma what makes uh, it nonlinear because we have these uh, squared terms here. Um, and again, as I mentioned, you have an initial condition and then constraints on the u values. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up and solve this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just construct the model first of all. Um, and I'll put this to the side of, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just put that to the side of this. Okay, so here's the Ali Chan problem. And I'll put this right to the side as we build it. Okay, so first of all, we are going to... Um, we're going to first of all need to get our, okay, we need to first of all do parameters and variables. Okay, so there's some parameters. We're going to have uh, declare p equals zero. That's going to be a helper parameter just to define when is the uh, last uh, time point in the horizon. We have our u value as well. We're going to say that's greater than negative one, less than one. Have some variables, x1, 2, and 3 with their initial conditions. And then some equations as well. We want to minimize p times x3. p is just going to be equal to 1 right at the very last point. And then we have the derivative of x1 equals x2. Derivative of x2 equals u. And then our final differential equation there. Okay, and then I'm also going to construct a, uh, a plot file here as well. Uh, just be able to see it on the web interface. If I want to include more than one, I just put new trend and then add another uh, plot file. Okay, so there I have a plot file with u, x1, x2, x3, and then a new trend just with x1 through x3. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, construct our um, a data file as well. And this will need to have time. Uh, and I'm just going to go between 0 and pi over 2. I'm going to put a small time step there just at the beginning. And then 0.1 time steps from there on out and then finish off with uh, pi over 2. Okay, I also have this p parameter. That's going to be 0 everywhere, except at the very last step, it's going to be equal to uh, 1. Okay, so there is my, um, let me go ahead and save that. There's a, a comma-separated value file. That's the data file. I have my model file. Let me create a MATLAB script now uh, to be able to set up and solve this problem. Okay, so here I just uh, clearing, closing everything. I have to find my server and application name. Uh, I'm going to add path to this APM folder that you'll be able to download as well. That's the AP Monitor library for solving these problems. I'll clear the application, uh, load my APM model file. Okay, so that was this model file that I just created. Okay, and then I'm going to load my data file. That was this Excel or CSV file. Okay, I'm going to set a couple options here, uh, just in terms of solver, nodes, uh, manipulated variable type. And then set up my first manipulated variable, which is the u value. And that I'm going to turn the status on, or set it equal to 1. Uh, I have a small delta cost, uh, so penalty on movement of u, avoid any chatter. And then I'm going to set up um, x1 through x3 as state variables. This is completely optional if you just want to use the MATLAB interface. This allows you to see those variables through the web interface. Okay, and then I want to solve it and then display the output. Okay, so we're basically done here, but we can also uh, display the solution, uh, you know, retrieve it into MATLAB with the APM SOL function, or I can open up a web interface as shown there. 
I'll display uh, the optimal solution, get the x3 end value, and then let me just construct a figure. There's subplot 1 and subplot 2. Okay, so that's how you construct the MATLAB script. Python is very similar. I'm just going to just uh, scroll through this, uh, loading the model and data file, set some of these same options, manipulated variables, state variables, solve it, and uh, get the solution into Python. Uh, print the optimal solution and then let's go to, just go ahead and plot it just like we did with the other one okay so there are Python and MATLAB let's just go ahead and run this now um, okay so I'm gonna open this up in Python you can uh, run this through a number of different editors or uh, ID um, environments okay so I'll go ahead and run that and then it'll return the optimal solution okay and I can look at uh, the solution in Python okay so it has the u value that's calculated uh, there's also an exact u as well uh, that is uh, you're able to derive okay so just comparing the numerical and the exact solution the two line up very well there's x1 x2 and x3 okay so we're trying to minimize the value of x3 right at that last point and that's going to essentially be equal to zero right there but this is the u profile that i needed in order to make that happen okay if i come here to the um, trends i can see for example trend one i had um you know here is uh okay x1 through x3 you can see some of those collocation points as well this is just through the online web viewer and then the value of u as well. Okay, so that's how you can uh, view that. If I go to trend two, I can see that just with the x1 through x3. Okay, let me run this in MATLAB as well. Um, so this is Python that we just ran. Um, we should be able to get the same solution in MATLAB. Once it opens up, I'll just go ahead and run it, and then we'll um, it'll open up the same web interface. Uh, but we'll also be able to plot the same solution in MATLAB. Okay, so MATLAB is opening, and then I'll just run this. Okay, and let me come back to the uh, MATLAB interface here. Okay, the, the command prompt. Okay, so it gave us the same solution. Here's the solver output, 14 iterations. It took about 0.3 seconds to solve this problem, and you can see the objective function there as well. Okay, and uh, if I maximize this, you can see that same solution in MATLAB, and MATLAB also came up with this um, same web interface that we saw before that was also generated through the Python. Okay, so uh, that concludes um, this tutorial. If you'd like to download the example files for this, they're all posted online. Um, just come to the uh, AP Monitor Dynamic Optimization okay, website, and there um, you'll get uh, more benchmarks. And then this will be the very first uh, problem here. You can just go ahead and download uh, the solution files uh, right here in MATLAB and Python, and there is the reference uh, number two if you'd like to go get a little bit more information about this problem.